I'm Mario West with Cogsville Tool Products. Roller burnishing is not a material removal process. It is a material displacement process for steels that are 45 Rockwell on the C scale and below. Roller finish tools offer a fast, clean, and eco economical process for sizing and finishing parts. It accurately sizes parts to within tenths or microns with single digit micro inch surface finishes. The finished component has an improved surface finish and precise size control at a much faster production rate. And finally, roller burnishing tools can be operated on any machine spindle. There are many benefits with roller burnishing. It can improve surface finish to single digit RA, size control within 5 tenths or 0.101 millimeter or better, it can increase surface hardness up to 10%, it can improve fatigue life 300% or more, it reduces friction and noise levels, enhances corrosion resistance, and is less expensive, faster, and cleaner than other secondary operations such as grinding, lapping, and honing. It's very important to have the correct bore preparation before you roll or burnish. For best results, any surface to be roll or burnished should have a constant and tear-free pre-finish. 80 to 120 RA is what we recommend and typical size change is one to two tenths or three to five microns per every 10 micro inches displaced in most tool steels. Cogstall offers a vast array of tooling options. Always be certain you are using the correct tool for the application or machine type. Standard tooling is available in diameters from 0.187 to 4 inches and 5 to 101 millimeters with work link options from 2 to 8 inches long and 50 to 203 millimeters. We offer automatic and machine fed tooling for three bores and bottoming series for blind bore applications. Roller burnishing tools are best used when operated at 80 to 100 surface feet per minute. Feed rates of 10 to 156 inches per rev are based on the nominal tooling diameter. Applying clean coolant is also very important for improved part quality and tool life. Ideally, it is best to begin the burnishing process with the tool adjusted a few tenths or microns greater than the whole diameter. Final tooling adjustment may be required after the initial pass. Excessive interference can result in overburnishing that can be identified by tearing or flecking of the material. The following data illustrates the surface profiles of a part both before and after roller burnishing. Notice how the peaks and valleys have been displaced by the burnishing process. The following is a brief video clip of a burnishing tool in action. Now I'm going to show you how to properly replace the wear components in the roller burnishing tool. To begin, it just takes basic tooling, just a, a regular flathead screwdriver, and just a basic adjustable wrench is all you really need. The tool is kept in place by a spiral locks pin. You'd like to begin by removing this pin. That's so. You have a spiral locks washer, your retainer, and your spring. Now the whole assembly comes out. You might want to be careful, the rolls may fall down, but that's okay. Okay. And also behind the sleeve, you have a thrust race and a thrust bearing, and there will be another thrust race down in the bottom. If you remove that side. Okay. You want to pull back on your locking ring and just unscrew the bearing collar until it is completely removed, as such. And now the mandrel is exposed with all your other components down here. Notice there are flats on the mandrel, so any adjustable wrench will be just fine. Okay, now your tool has been completely disassembled. Now that the tool has been properly disassembled, it's important to check the tool for any dirt, grit, chips, or any other foreign matter. Also, you should check any items for, that are worn, such as your mandrel and rolls. Okay. Now we will begin to 
reassemble the tool. First thing you like to do is, is take your new mandrel and just screw it back into the shank. Just make sure it's been tight and snug. And you take your bearing collar and screw it back onto your shank. And you want to screw it about halfway down because it's a lot easier to assemble the other components when it's adjusted about midway. Okay. Now you should reinstall the thrust race. And I always recommend repacking this thrust bearing with uh, any kind of grease will be just fine. Okay. If you need to replace your cage, most tools in this series, this is an 875 series, they have some little holes here for spanner wrenches. So you'll take these just break that loose and at this point you should be able to hand screw that off. The cage typically wears last. You usually get a couple of roll sets and a couple of manuals before a cage wears in most applications. But you want to check the bottom of the cage for any wear or on the sides. You can see where the roll can physically dig into the cage and when you get to that point it's time to replace the cage also. So this cage looks good so we will screw it back on to the sleeve. Make sure it's snug with the spanner wrenches. Just slide this back on the mandrel. Okay, now the tricky part is to install the rolls. There are several ways to do this. You can actually wrap the cage with tape, or you can pat the cage with, with any kind of bearing grease, and it will secure the rolls in place. But I'm simply just going to reinstall it just by pulling up on the tool before it's fully assembled. You want to make sure you do not force the rolls into the pocket because it's a very tight fit and you don't want to damage the cage during this process. Okay, before I install the last roll, you'll notice on IV burnishing tools, the roll is tapered and the pocket on the cage is tapered. So you always want to match the taper, which on these tools, it will always be the larger end towards the top of the tool or towards the front of the tool. Okay. Now you want to take your spring, reinstall it, the retainer. Now you want to reinstall your spiral locks washer, which can also be rather tricky, but there's a groove inside of the, the chrome bearing collar, and this just forms around and snaps into there. Okay. Now that the spiral locks has been reinstalled, you take the tool, and just pull on it, make sure it's in the, in the groove like it should be, and always adjust it, make sure everything's fine there. And then I also recommend taking a tool and putting it in a spindle if you have that availability. And just check it and make sure there's no excessive run out. Now Cogswell does offer tooling repair. And if you need to return a tool or if you have any tools you'd like to return for repair, you can contact our customer service office and they will provide you with an RMA number. On occasion, negative and varying pre-finishes can occur. Please refer to our troubleshooting guide in our catalog or on our website, which can address most of these issues. Cogstall offers a vast array of roller burnishing tools for almost any application. For more information, please visit our website at www.cogstall.com or contact your local Cogstall Tool Products Regional Manager.